in the whole span of software engineering roles, if you're looking for the right path for yourself, and maybe you're not even sure what all the options are out there, you wanna watch this video to find out what the paths are and what technical skills you're gonna to have to focus on. As an early engineer at WhatsApp and an ex-engineering manager and a hiring manager at Meta, I have done hundreds of interviews and thousands of resume reviews. And if you've been following my channel, you would know that I love to analyze data and look at spreadsheets and all that. So with the help of our intern, Emma, we looked at 58 job postings to analyze what are the top five keywords that are listed in the job postings for the most popular roles like AI engineering, full stack, front end, back end, and general software engineering roles. And at the end of the video, I'm going to tell you two roles that are going to be the first roles to be automated and potentially killed by AI. These are going to be the first ones to go. So stick around until the end. But first things first, let's talk about these Frankenstein resumes. So when you're crafting your resume, you want to think of it like a restaurant. You can be a tourist restaurant with sushi, hot pot, burger, and pizza. Does that sound like a quality restaurant to you? Or you can customize your resume, ditch all the random skills, focus on only the best and the relevant projects and the keywords, or the role that you're applying to. So you want to be like Jiro, the three-star Michelin sushi restaurant of the resume. And I don't mean you shouldn't learn a variety of skills, but I just mean you want to curate the information on your profiles. So as a software engineer, maybe there are a lot of different things that you could do, but if the employers are not looking for everything under the sun, you don't need to necessarily tell them that you can do all the other things because it's not actually going to help you land the role. I cover this extensively in the Ultimate Resume Handbook. I have a chapter on this, Developing a Strategy for Targeted Resume. I'm going to pull just some of the highlights from the book for this video. So I'll first start with the top five most popular software engineering careers. So let's start with backend engineering. I was mainly a backend engineer for most of my career, and Python was a language that I mostly used. Used. I really liked being a backend engineer because I love logic and problem solving more than the visual interface building. So this role includes titles like backend software engineer, backend developer, and anything about infrastructure would be in this category. So the top five keywords for this role was number one, Python, 82%, AWS, 55%, Next was Java, cloud platforms, then containerization. So in the book, I listed the top 10 keywords so you can check out the book if you're too lazy to do your own research. But if you're up for it, do the research yourself. Just go to LinkedIn or whatever job search tool that you use and search the job titles that you want to target. Then what I do is I ask ChatGPT to pull out the list of keywords for me and put them in a spreadsheet. Then you just count how many times you see the same keyword over and over divided by the total number of job listings that you have looked at. Or you can go to my website and pay $20 to get the list, whatever works for you. Next popular rule is front-end engineering. These include things like front-end developer, front-end software engineer, front-end web developer. And this is an excellent entry point if you're new to programming because front-end engineers mainly focus on user experience, building buttons and UI and handling all the visual things. My first internship was in web. I personally really hated it. While on the job, I learned that I really don't like pushing pixels around. So it's a personal choice. Try it out and see if you like it. The top five keywords for front-end engineers, 90% of the job descriptions ask for JavaScript. Big surprise. 80% ask for React, 70% HTML, then CSS and AngularJS. By the way, if you want to get the list of the keywords, you can go to my website and download a four-page PDF so you can access it anytime. Next is full stack engineer. So this is the combo of the first two. You do both back end and front end. Titles could include things like web developer or full stack developer. Number one keyword for this category was CSS followed by HTML, JavaScript, C sharp. So you'll notice that the percentages are pretty low here compared to what you saw. For example, front end engineering roles, they wanted 90% wanted JavaScript and backend roles as for Python 82% of time. So these keywords are all over the place sort of because it covers a broad range of expertise needing diverse skill sets because you need to do front end and back end. And that's partly why people say it's easier to start in front end. It's more straightforward and less languages to learn. And you just know if you know JavaScript, there are going to be jobs that you can apply for. You will notice a similar pattern with 
AI engineering roles, which I'm going to talk about next. So right now, AI and machine learning is really hot, but this role is not for everyone. I talked extensively about this in multiple videos already and why you should or shouldn't pursue this role. So watch those videos if this is really your thing. You're basically going to need a lot of specialized skills and strong math background. These are the top five keywords. Number one is machine learning 69% generative AI, large language models, data management, containerization, and deep learning. And there are also many job posting with just general titles like software engineering. It could be junior software engineer, entry-level software engineer, or just general software engineer or software developer. There's a wide variety of titles like this. And for these roles, the top five keywords included Number one, Python was 67%. Number two was C++ at 50%. Next was Java and JavaScript, followed by data management. But other than these top five roles, there are plenty of other roles. So I'll talk about that next. There is mobile engineering. And I did not pull the keywords for this role because it's so straightforward. You pretty much choose between iOS, which is Swift or Objective-C, or Android, which is Java. This is another really good entry point requiring just one language to get started. Plus there are tons of contracting gigs that you can pick up. But I personally am not a big fan of this path. Your projects are going to heavily, heavily depend on Apple and Google's newest releases. And you know, I was an early engineer at WhatsApp and every freaking year, I'm exaggerating, but I need to rebuild a lot of the features and deprecate old ones based on whatever Google and Apple decided to do. But if you're okay with that, it is rewarding with direct impact and visibility. As a mobile engineer, you'll see directly what you're actually creating and millions of people will use your app directly. So seeing your work come to life on users' phones can be pretty rewarding if you're okay with the frequent updates. Another really popular one is gaming or graphics engineering. And I know a lot of people find this role really exciting but the industry is known for long hours and lower pay. If you think about it logically, whenever there are more people who really, really, really want to do something really passionately, the competition is really high. So companies can get away with paying a little bit less. So choose that if you're really passionate about gaming. Another one is cybersecurity engineering. You are basically safeguarding networks from cyber attacks. This is really critical and experiencing a lot of growth, but it's another role that's really hard to get into, kind of like AI engineering. There are almost no junior roles available in this category. You will need highly specialized skills, so I wouldn't recommend it if you're new. Data scientist is another role that's really popular. It's all about manipulating data. People sometimes get it mixed up with machine learning engineering. And an analogy that I can share is imagine if you are or a chef who want to create a new signature dish. So as a data scientist, you would gather the data on different recipes, analyze the dishes, maybe high ratings, identify patterns like popular ingredients. And machine learning engineer is more like using this data to build a machine learning model that can predict which new recipes would be successful based on specific ingredients and techniques. As a junior engineer, you will see more opportunities as a data scientist, not so much as a machine learning engineer. I did get a request for top salaries in data science, so I'm planning on making a video soon. Okay, as promised, bonus tips. The two fields that are going to be automated and replaced by AI first are DevOps and QA. Automation is going to be a major driver of change in the tech industry. DevOps and QA automation tools are becoming increasingly sophisticated, helping to automate a lot of repetitive testing tasks previously done by human engineers. AI is not going to replace all jobs all at once overnight, right? Instead, it's going to start replacing our tasks one by one. And the tasks that are easier to replicate are more repetitive tasks like QA and DevOps. And inevitably, those are just going to be much easier to replace with artificial intelligence. Now, if you want to learn more about AI taking over our jobs as software engineers, watch this video. Otherwise, YouTube thinks you should watch this one next. I'll see you there. Bye.